Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about a technique called literate programming and how we can use it to write documentation that doesn't go out of date. This video is going to be fast, I need you to read and listen at the same time. I believe in you. One of the problems with tech documentation, API docs, installation instructions, etc., is that they get stale. APIs change, software and plugins alter their interface and commands, and websites go away. As you probably know, this is called software rot. To solve this, I propose we write our documentation in a way that can be executed or tested. Before I show you my solution, I'd like to talk about a key concept I've used, called literate programming. Don Knuth, a computing pioneer known for his books The Art of Computer Programming, Surreal Numbers, and for his invention of tech typesetting. He also popularised Big O notation, we have a lot to thank him for. The literate programming paradigm, as conceived by Knuth, represents a move away from writing programs in the manner and order imposed by the computer, and instead enables programmers to develop programs in the order demanded by the logic and flow of their thoughts. Knuth wrote his first version for Pascal. In modern languages, you can write your functions in any order, so modern literate programming focuses on writing for humans first. Two languages you may have heard of support this model natively, CoffeeScript and Haskell. So what does this hippie paradigm look like? Literate CoffeeScript looks like a README file interspersed with code examples. The CoffeeScript interpreter can run this file as normal. This is typical of how we do literate programming nowadays, by simply inserting executable code in the correct order within some markup. Eve is an example of a proper literate programming language. As conceived by Knuth, code can be written in any order. To quote the Eve site, a literate programming document tells a story with your source, featuring a table of contents, text, references, images, and of course code. These elements add context to your program, making the intent behind your code concrete. Interested users, and maybe your future self, will thank you. This sounds amazing, I thought to myself last month. So I wrote a small wrapper that lets you write executable markdown with any language embedded and blogged about it. I just missed hitting the front page. I call this tool Blaze. Blaze code is just regular code-fenced markdown. You can render it as documentation or execute it as code. By the way, if you think I should have a semicolon at the end of the JavaScript example, take a look at standard.js, your mind will be blown. What Blaze does is very simple. Blaze strips out anything that's not inside code fences, then passes the code along to the selected interpreter. It's not magic, but it's a powerful idea. It's just a short shell script with no dependencies, and I've released it under an MIT license. This means you can distribute it with your containers, embed it in your app, and run it anywhere SH can run. Back to our documentation problem. I realized that I already have this tool that can be used to make our documentation verifiable. A testable doc looks exactly like the documentation we've been writing all along. In fact, this file only has one small change. It's got the blaze shebang at the top of the file, making it executable. So what have I learned through this? There are challenges, and they are as ever human, not technical. If you want to make your documentation testable, you can do so today, with almost no changes to your codebase. Blaze even supports Lisp.